last time on Blue's live series. Gepetti contacted an alien support group and learned of others' experiences with abductions, either personally or a loved one. Sal and Akimi Lounge, who headed the organization, assigned her to a group whom she invited into her home. One young man told her that his brother had been taken, but he was found dead in an open field. This greatly troubled Gepetti. She reflected on what agents Marcel and Carlos said and realized their words were, Most are returned alive. Fear gripped her heart, but she did her best to stifle this feeling. Seeing her fears, he said, Oh, I'm sure it won't be that way for Blue, though he didn't sound convincing. Her sisters stopped by to check on her. They offered for her to come and stay with them until this was over or she was better able to deal with it. She refused. Blue might be returned, and he wouldn't know where I was. No, I must stay here. Pastor Stone also stopped in and recommended some Bible passages for her to read, and he quoted scripture to comfort her. Remember, if ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, Remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. Matthew seventeen twenty. She thanked him. After they left, she went upstairs to talk to the mirror, but then she saw Blue's image. For a moment, she stared, and then she broke down in tears. She went outside to console herself with Pepper, who was happy to see her and appreciative of the attention. She found Pepper's presence comforting. Still trying to deal with her overwhelming feelings of sadness and fear, she decided to meditate. This was also very difficult for her mind kept thinking of horrible things that might be happening to Blue. The young man's word about his brother echoed in her mind. Was Blue's image in the mirror an omen of things to come? She kept trying to concentrate on other things, even passages from the Bible she had learned as a child. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. John fourteen twenty seven. She repeated these words over and over in her mind, trying to find some peace, some comfort, some solace, something to ease her feelings and the tensions within. This, too, she abandoned and decided to take up knitting a sweater. Unfortunately, her sweater wasn't growing in size. She would knit, purl, skip a stitch, increase a stitch, then oops! All the way back there, she had knitted everything wrong and it had to be torn out. Her mind searched for blue. Every sound she heard or any shadow she thought she saw had her looking around. It was snowing, but Blue wasn't out there in the snow, nor was he looking the books or watching TV. Refocus, she told herself, and looked at her knitting again. Ah, oh, gee, not again. Ripping stitches out again, she glanced at her work in exasperation. Will this sweater ever become complete? After a time, she put that away, then grabbed the good book, and decided to read the passages Pastor Stone had recommended. She read Psalms 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his namesake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Psalms 91, 1-5 through 5. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty, I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with His feathers, and under His wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor the arrow that flieth by day. While she was reading, Pastor Stone dropped by and spoke with her. He offered his assistance and asked her to be certain to come to church. 
It would be good for her to get out of the house and be with people. He told her that he and the church were praying for her in blue. Have you read the passages? Yes, Geppetti answered. Have faith. God will bring something good from all of our troubles. He never leaves us or forsakes us. It is our darkest hours that we find he is there lending his strength and guidance. Before he left, she knelt and he prayed with her for Blue's safe return and for his mental and emotional well-being. Pastor Stone prayed for God to give Geppetti peace, strength, and wisdom in the days ahead. He prayed silently for her mind since she had mentioned seeing Blue in the image in the mirror. Pastor Stone was deeply concerned for Geppetti. Will Blue be found alive? Keep watching Blue's Life Series.